Hey folks, Dave, the not so evil evil Viking 13, returning here to the American Republic in Empire Total War. Now, before I dig into what you guys are seeing here, I want to encourage you all to check out our new uh, Total War Attila series. We're playing as Vikings, that is myself and Jeremiah slash Germ Gaming, and the game is actually really solid even here at launch. Uh, Total War Attila is probably one of the most solid Total War launches in quite a few years. Anyway, especially playing as the not-so-evil Evil Viking 13, playing as an in-game Viking faction has been a lot of fun so far. We're having a blast, and you guys should definitely check that out. There's a link in the description, as well as an annotation on your screen, and you can tab that up for later. But for now, let's take a look at what's going on here in the American Republic. Last episode, after years and years of war, we finally got peace with Austria. However, in the in-between episode end of turn AI turns, it looks like the small nation of Bavaria is going to declare war on us. Their allies are Austria, Venice, Spain, and Prussia, and the Italian states. Our allies are France and Great Britain, so I'm going to actually not call on my allies and hope that their allies don't join this war either. Okay, good. I was able to keep it small scale, it is just Bavaria being stupid. I wonder if I conquer Bavaria and give it to Prussia, will that bring us to a complete peace in Europe at long last? France is actually offering a trade agreement, but they are requesting Georgia. That's insane, France. It looks like Prussia was trying to load armies up onto a fleet in order to invade one of my territories, but my naval blockade has prevented this, thankfully. A long AI turn brings us to the winter of 1840. War has broken out between France and Austria once again. I have a bunch of new first rates and some more recruitment. Now Prussia's armies are looking pretty imposing there on the horizon. I think a lot of these guys are battered. But still, just the sheer number of troops is a bit terrifying. And now, of course, we have Bavaria causing trouble at the border. Sir. I'm going to start things off with housekeeping. 
or punishment for everyone. A little bit of industrial growth Ready, right there. Waiting and replenishment. Your humble and sir. replenishment. We had over 53,000 gold Make this ready. turn. Sir, your orders? Immediately! Waiting for your orders. Your humble sir. And replenishment. A yes. lot of these armies have needed help for quite a while, but we were so low on funds for a few years there, it's been difficult to actually keep replenishment going. Now let's do some actual building. 24 pounder cannons, howitzers, cavalry. Eh, let's not recruit a general. Let's just do line infantry. Your humble servant. We'll add those to our growing army over here. Let's give it a general as well. General Hamlet Barford. I also haven't checked in with our government for a while. We are, of course, still a republic. Capital is Philadelphia. Prosperity is spectacular. Prestige rank is majestic. Our taxes are... Definitely normal. Our president is Clifford Allen. You can see his family tree here. Not that it really matters when it comes to a republic. He is married to Cynthia. I like these portraits that Darth Maud added. That's pretty cool. Wow, the majority of our trade is still being blocked by, I would guess it's probably Sweden. Uh, there's an Austrian navy there. Are they actually still blocking the port? I don't think so. Ah, uh, yep. Sweden right there with two large navies. Now, these aren't completely first rate, so I can probably take them eventually. There's our USS Nathaniel Green. Okay, before I get distracted again, let's try and get some trade going with France once again, who's now at war with Spain, Prussia, Venice, and Bavaria. Spain, well not Spain, France, you need some money, here's 12,000 for a trade agreement. Wow, they said no. Because they are beset on all sides once again, 20,000 gold, France, come on. I'm not going to give you Georgia. Ridiculous. Spain, <laughs> our longtime enemy who we are currently with peace or at peace with, although your people hate us. 12,000 gold. No, we don't want to give you that much. 5,000 gold for a trade agreement, and I'm sure you're just going to turn that money right against France. 8,900. Uh, okay. I can accept that. Austria, your broken empire, would you like to trade? Twelve thousand for trade. They drive a hard bargain. I'll do ten thousand. Consider it reparations for the war. <laughs> I don't want military access. Definitely not for thirty thousand. Eleven thousand. Okay. Oh, come on. Both of those trade areas are going to be blocked, so I just basically wasted a bunch of money. If I can get Sweden off my back, though, uh, that will uh, be a nice boost to our economy. Ready for order. Onward. Pull this army back, this army forward. 
get you guys Sir. in the star fort. March forward for crown and country. Your humble servant, sir. Your you guys order? here. Your humble. You guys servant. here. Repair the gardens and build a craft workshop. Yes, sir. Our lines are pretty solid here. I mean, the Prussians have tons of armies, but look at all those American full stacks. We have drawn a line in the sand. Speaking of which, it looks like France is finally doing really, really well with plenty of armies. Now, I know you guys don't want to see me lose all my territory in Europe, but to reiterate, like this campaign isn't a campaign about making an empire, although I am playing uh, Empire Total War, of course. It's relatively easy to build up large armies, large navies, and then just steamroll the whole map. I've done it before as the Americans, it's definitely possible, and at this point, we're so well established both back home and in Europe that it would take a while for Prussia to fall, and probably Great Britain as well, but uh, it would just be a long, kind of repetitive campaign. What I'd rather do is do the more difficult goals. Try to actually get peace in Europe. The fact that we already have peace with Austria actually surprised me. They uh, give up, not easily, but before I approach their home territories. And if I can subjugate Prussia, that only leaves Sweden. Now, I'm not going to completely give up all of my territories. We fought so hard for Amsterdam that I feel like Amsterdam will remain an American like military province and maybe a center of trade. After all, the Dutch would not stop declaring war. It's been our base of operations for so long. I think we've earned Amsterdam. But as for the Rhineland and these other Germanic territories, I have no interest in keeping them longer than I really have to to support the war. I'd like to give Alsace-Lorraine back to France as early as possible. And probably the Rhineland as well. Um, I don't want to give it to Prussia because they're at war with France. Um, not sure what the best scenario is for the Rhineland. If I give it to France, they're just going to immediately lose it. Uh, Great Britain, who are you at war with? Austria and Sweden. Great Britain's not at war with Prussia. I could give it to them and they could be a buffer in between Prussia and France. My goal here is definitely as much non-intervention as possible. I want to back out of these long-term European wars. But I also want to prepare for the worst. Uh, speaking of which, let's make sure that our military uh, province up here in Iceland is continuing to grow. If I remember my history correctly, uh, Iceland actually had a couple of important NATO bases on it during the Cold War. So we're kind of uh, setting things up for the future here with our American bases here in Iceland. Okay, 14,000 gold left. I'm not going to make any moves against Prussia just yet. I'd like yes, to go ahead and take out this Bavarian army, but yes, sir. everybody's replenishing and you're not quite within range. Yeah, you're still replenishing too. I could try to actually use this army, which is not too injured, and go ahead and take it on. They have no artillery. How much artillery do I have? More than enough to make a difference. Make ready. I should be within reinforcement range Forward. as well if I go right there for these guys. So, yeah, I'll do that in just a minute. First, let's check in on recruitment. Now, we are still occupying Mexico because they also would not stop declaring war on us like the Dutch. A bit unthankful, seeing we actually helped them gain their independence. Who those heavy first rates. 
5,000 gold with 350 maintenance per turn. Let's go ahead and send these heavy first rates up to Norfolk to join the main body of our navy though. Oop. I have that militia selected, not the navy. There we go. The Argus, the Triton, the Narcissus? It's an unusual name. Any orders? And the Congress. <laughs> Which I'm going to assume is the slowest moving ship in my fleet. What to spend this money on? I think I'm going to focus on economic improvements first. The Carolinas are mostly happy here. What else can I build? Do we have any national buildings that I can build? We already have Independence Hall, that's cool. That might be it. So I'll build some steam-powered cloth mills. Anything to keep our income going up. The western frontier looks pretty quiet for now. The year is still 1840, we haven't even gotten to the uh, time period of the American Civil War, so we definitely are not exploring the Black Hills region in this time period. So for now, the natives out here are safe. What do you require of me? They're also safe from our Protestant yes. missionary who apparently uh, is really not doing well up here at all. Well, I've spent just about everything that I can, so that just leaves our attack against Bavaria. Let's hope for a quick resolution, and I'm also hoping that that territory will come in handy for ending our war with Prussia. Aha! Their main force in their capital is not within reinforcement range. They have no artillery and only dragoons for cavalry. Although these are unique dragoons, I think. This one is going to hurt Bavaria. I'm really not sure why they declared war so willingly. This is going to be a cold one. Look at that solid looking hillside though. That is nice. I am going to have to push up once again. So I'm not going to deploy any of these cannons except for my mortars which have to be deployed. Put you guys on quick lime. And my howitzer will bring up the rear. Not going to spend a bunch of time on deployment here. Their lines are small. Going to do some light infantry next to the cannon there. And then some line infantry. Let's move one more line to this side. What does that leave us? Tons of options for cavalry. And a unit of light and a unit of line. Light infantry here. Line there. And I guess just normal line right there. Dragoons on the left along with regiment of horse. Actually let's do both units of light dragoons together. You guys will be group one. Regiment of Horse on the... we'll say right. Alright. As soon as this gets going, let's push up. I want to take this hill immediately. They do have a river, but 
with my artillery, they're gonna have to push. They'll have no choice. Howitzers also move up. Dragoons take the left. We're just gonna make them come to us. Orders. Switch to round shot and go ahead and drop some on them across the river. Even though it's almost out of range even for the round shot. Shots out. Looks like no hits just yet. Not too surprising given the range. You know, they can just keep that river crossing if they want it. I want the hill. They're actually not using the second crossing either. That's surprising. There are some hits with the round shot on their line infantry. Here come their dragoons. Deploy howitzers with quick line. Uh, that's our 12 pounder cannon right there. Go ahead and do round shot as soon as you're ready. Light infantry deploy pikes. Light infantry deploy uh, stakes, actually. Same concept. Come on, stakes, stakes, stakes. There we are. Ooh, and Quicklime right in that back unit. They both break right there. Perfect. Oh, lost some infantry to those initial cannonballs. Let's just pull our dragoons back. No need to chase them so enthusiastically at this point. They'll come back, but I'll have our cannons go ahead and just focus on them. Let's get these guys lined up to get out of that cannon's fire, too. It's a nice long line of stakes right there. Mortar, switch to quick line and just. Oh. Don't give them an attack order, they will abandon their cannons. Twelve pounder, refocus on the dragons. There's our howitzer with the quick one. Devastating shots from our dragoons right there. Very nice. Hey, here comes their general. Dragoons pull back. Let's not take too much fire from our own troops there. As expected, the right side remains quiet. 
Well, let's take advantage of that and go ahead and cross behind them. One of our cannons must have exploded. We lost several men here. There goes our 12 pounder, firing some shot a little bit short there. Some nice quick lime, and there's some bouncing round shot, weakening their ranks as they march in. That's the general's bodyguard right there. Let's pull our horse back. I also don't want you guys having a free reign of this area. Let's go ahead and just close this gap in. Ooh, a double hit with that quick line. 80 casualties and 40 casualties. Not bad at all. My artillery is definitely making them work for it. Come on, Empire Pathfinding. Cross the bridge. Now we switch to canister shots. Fire on the grenadiers. Dragoons take on the general's bodyguard, who is advancing with his men. Brave, but foolish. goes their general getting caught in the ambush by the 21st Regiment of Light Dragoons. They don't even have time to form lines and their general has fallen. And here comes more quick line to add to the suffering. They finally formed lines here on the left, Republican Guard and Grenadiers. I guess that is technically my right. Balancers, focus on these guys who aren't quite broken yet. Shrapnel shot, fire on the Republican Guard. I'm making one last desperate bayonet charge that is broken before they can even get close to our lines. They are definitely stuck in the killing fields down here. I'm going to go ahead and have my mortars hold fire. Howitzers, focus on these guys in the back here. Horse, go ahead and push up hard. Cannons focus on these guys as well. 
will catch their retreat at the river crossing. Oh man. No safe haven here. I'm not even going to bother moving my line. My uh, cavalry definitely have this under control. Dragoons, hold your fire. Yeah, this is pathetic. I'm just going to have my artillery hold fire and run them down with horse. Not a great start for Bavaria's war. That battle netted us a heroic victory with only 134 men lost, while basically wiping out their entire army. Dragoons getting tons of kills of course, our line infantry, and our cannons not really getting a lot of uh, recorded kills, probably because we were using that quick line shot a lot. Onward. Sir. Well, I think we can replenish that without any issues. March. Let's fall back. Yes, sir. Regarrison uh, Stuttgart. And I guess I'll just save this money for next time. 2,800 gold left. Tell you what, France, even though you're being a jerk, let's just offer you some money. You're fighting uh, Austria, Bavaria, Spain, Prussia. You need it. That's going to do it for this turn. Bavaria has a second army marching up. I'm just going to intercept it and auto resolve. None shall defeat us. We took a strange number of losses in that battle. 877? That's not right. It is now the summer of 1841 and America's economic power is exploding. 70,000, 77,000 gold income this turn. First things first, let's lower our taxes. Europe, your taxes remain the same. <laughs> You're paying for the war that you started. So even with lower taxes, that's 54,000 next turn. 
even going as low as we can go, that would still be 30,000. But we are still at war. Let's not go too crazy. One of our generals got the plus two morale brave soldier. Intellectual advance, abolition of slavery in 1841 in the USA. New economic buildings, new recruitment, and a new election. Our current government has been re-elected. Well, with money to throw around, 10,000 gold for a dock, and 10,000 gold there too. So our new troops here are going this direction. Forward, march. And more recruitment. At the ready. Really could use more cavalry. Here we go. I can recruit from here as well. How about down south? Oh yeah. Do some horse artillery as well. <laughs> Man, I am not used to having this much money. This is fantastic. Ready for orders. Uh, that army is injured, as is this one now. You guys are almost back to full strength. Bavaria, though, has a fort. Yes, stealth is my cloak. Rest and no more troops. So, Sir. what to do? What to do? I might see what auto resolve does. I don't really feel like fighting another gigantic fort battle if I don't actually have to. Let's get all you guys within reinforcement range. March. Anything Sorry. more? Your orders. All right, auto resolve. Be reasonable. We only lost a thousand men. Not bad for a fort siege. Attack! That destroys the nation of Bavaria. Yes, sir. By the left. March. March you guys backwards. Race. You guys stay here. Our lines are a little thinner, but not hey, bad. Ready. I'll send in my newer troops further south as well. For Bavaria, I'll repair the Royal Academy and the Imperial Palace, but not their military buildings, and you guys are going to get taxed. Now, uh, Prussia. You and your nice large empire up here. Would you accept Bavaria for peace? I will give you Bavaria and 10,000 gold just to ensure peace. They want the Rhineland, they want Georgia, they want New Mexico for a peace treaty. We will give you Rhineland. And let's say 15,000 gold in exchange for peace. This is definitely one of those final offer scenarios. After all, the Prussians declared the war. 
peace treaty signed. There we go. Now then, they have burned most of their own territory there. Uh, I do have troop movements with France, right? I can just... Okay, yeah. So I can move through French territory to get to Amsterdam if necessary. But I am going to want to, uh, I would say, fortify things and actually make use of Bavaria. I might offer it to Sweden and see what happens. For now, though, I'll repair it to full strength. Sir. Is everyone yes. replenishing and recruiting? Ready. Check, Waiting check, order. check. Maximum recruitment there. No more replenishment there, just a glitched flag it looks like. At the ready. Put you guys Sir. on the capitals. Your orders. Immediately. Aye, sir. Now we can really and truly take it out on just the Swedish uh, shipping lanes there. That brings our income down to 35,000 because of the lack of Prussian piracy. Like I said though, we're not an empire, that's okay with me. Peace and plenty of wealth is much more valuable to me than war and tons of wealth. Let's top you guys off with some militia there. Over here in Iceland, still building up our new docks. It's not going to surprise me if some of these large European empires really start clashing without me. I know I'm kind of in the way right now, and why am I still very friendly with Prussia? Quest trade, I'll offer you 5,000 for trade. 7,000. That's actually a pretty reasonable counter offer. I will accept. Income increases by just a bit there. If Sweden would just get off of my trade routes, or if I shove them off my trade routes, that should take care of my trade issues. On that note, seeing I'm already building two commercial basin large docks, that's 10,000 apiece, the rest of this cash goes to ships. First rates, and I'll say third rates, only. First rates for just pure strength and uh, third rates for speed and strength. Let's also build a 24 pounder frigate. Perhaps down here in Florida. Yeah. Our technology is looking quite solid. Only a few things left to research. Classical economics. We already have a modern university not being used. Aha! In the Netherlands. Bulldoze it. More room for industry. And Coburg. Where are you? Ah, you're in Bavaria. Bulldoze it. And with that, we have even more peace in Europe here, guys. I'm feeling really good about how this campaign is wrapping up. And I think the end is approaching now that we are 56 episodes in over more than a year. As I mentioned in the beginning, don't forget to check out our Total War Attila Viking campaign. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.